actually, you know, what, what for me, what's... Ah, yeah. Yeah. Is this on? Yeah. Okay. Um, what's most remarkable for me about Vito's activism is that he, you know, for someone who was at Stonewall, he was out of the fray for a long time. He was very afraid of what he saw at the Stonewall riots. He said at the time that he really, like many of his friends um, in the village, he only cared about going to the bar and having a great time and uh, finding a kind of liberation in the village that there, there didn't seem to need to be any more than that. And then, as Jeffrey does a wonderful job of showing, he got to GAA and realized that he could participate in the movement through movies and really galvanize people's attention and interest and make them feel much more comfortable when it was so difficult to be out in 1970 and to be screaming in the streets. And the wonderfully brave people like Arnie Kantrowitz and, and a number of people who are here tonight who were our forefathers, absolutely, and foremothers who were willing to go out and be so goddamn gutsy when it took incredible courage. We really should never forget that. And Vito, yes. Um, but Vito also was very practical about this and realized that not everyone had that courage or those opportunities. So he slowly started to realize how people could be brought into the movement through fun, through the uh, uh, film and dancing and cabaret. And then what's also important to recognize is that, you know, the, the gay rights movement in the late 70s into the early 80s prior to AIDS was kind of dying. There was a tremendous lack of energy as it became more corporatized. Um, you know, you had groups like National Gay Task Force and, and they, you know, they did wonderful things, but it wasn't the same kind of grassroots fervor that there had been back in the GAA days. So Vito, in publishing A Cellular Closet in 1981, had an enormous impact in kind of channeling anger from the community of people who were so, through his lessons, so outraged at what they were seeing on the screen, all these, these images of us as nothing but clowns and victims and villains and, and killers and psychopaths and suicides. And he was the first person you know, to really articulate that this was so unfair and this had everything to do with how we were being stigmatized in society. And then, as to get back to your question, as, as AIDS came into play, and there was such incredible hostility toward gay men in particular in New York City uh, that he and Arnie and six of their best friends put together GLAD. It was like this heroic resurgence of the gay rights movement that it had not, with an energy that it had not had in almost 15 years. So I hope, you know, through Jeffrey's film and my book, that people really recognize what Vito did to bring gay rights back in, on the map. Absolutely. Um, I just, one last question and we'll open it up to the audience. Um, Philip, you, well, this I guess is a question of both you, Philip, and, and Jeffrey. You are working with an extraordinary amount of material, like you have this uh, incredible footage of, of Vito himself, and then all these clips from the Children's Hour, the killing of Sister George, and then interviews with Vito's colleagues and family. What was the process like of, of putting this all together? Um, well, it was, it was actually, it was a very long process, of course, it was just hours and hours of footage. Uh, I mean, uh, 59 interviews from uh, all of the loved ones who knew Vito. Um, I always sort of felt we could make 10 movies about Vito Russo, we could make 20 movies about Vito Russo, and all of this history. Um, it became clear from the beginning we needed to focus it on the sort of three periods, the gay liberation, uh, the cellulite closet, and then uh, Vito's AIDS activism, and it was just a it was just a process of combing through the interviews, combing through the archival, and slowly uh, bringing it down to you know we started with a three hour cut and then got it to the cut we have. I think our main focus um, all along was um, that Vito was a guy who believed in himself from the very beginning, who lived by what he believed in, and that he was right. And uh, we really wanted uh, that to come across, most importantly. And it does. Thank you. Did you want to add anything? Oh, no. Um, as Philip said it very well. I mean, I think, you know, we did have a, a long cut, and we realized that there's just so much history that we couldn't tell the entire story of the gay liberation movement from Stonewall to Act Up, that we would have to take shortcuts. And it didn't directly relate to Vito or his experience or something he personally saw through his own eyes that it, and it had to go. So there's, there's always the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> there are still DVDs. 
Uh, we would love to take your questions. How is this possible that I do not see any hands up? I see a hand left, oh. Mr. Kramer. Oh, Mr. Kramer. There's a wonderful thing called fair use now. And um, a lot of documentary filmmakers are employing this. It's um, part of copyright law. And we did um, license much of the footage that's there. But the studio film clips, which are prohibitively expensive, as Robin Jeffrey can attest to from the cellular closet, um, there's been a change in attitude toward clearance. And uh, there are uh, legal firms that specialize in assisting documentary filmmakers to employ uh, short excerpts of copyrighted material, which is perfectly legal. Uh, in, in documentaries like this, so we're very, very grateful for Michael Donaldson, who's the lawyer who is um, very special. It's, it's really a great uh, It's been very, really nice. This, we couldn't have made this. I mean, I, Rob and Jeffrey can attest to it. Every one of their clips from the side of the closet had to be licensed through the studios. Every single actor had to be cleared. I mean, it was kind of a nightmare, right? So we didn't have to deal with a lot of that. Um, so things have gotten better for documentaries like this. Other questions? Yes, way in the back. Um, Arthur Bell, the Village Voice columnist, helped, wrote about AIDS and Hollywood also, and he was Vito's best friend. He helped start the movement against the shooting of cruising. Could you talk about Arthur's role and his friendship with Vito? Yeah, I mean, that's another thing. I mean, we had. We have you, Brandon. Uh, we had a lot of people talking about Arthur Bell. Arthur Bell was um, Arthur Evans' uh, partner, and uh, was they were early members, first of Gay Liberation Front, I think, and then Gay Activist Alliance. I mean, this is just one of those things. I mean, the whole uh, story of cruising, that's, a, that's something I assumed we would have in here. You know, and Vito was not for censorship. I mean, cruising was a, I don't know how many people have seen it, but it was a film made in 79 that um, was uh, set in the whole leather underground world. It was about a killer in this world, and uh, the gay community, Arthur Bell in particular, who was writing the uh, Bell's Tales column for the Village Voice, found out about the movie, and they decided that they were going to do everything they could to make it as difficult as possible for that crew to shoot the movie because they thought it was a negative portrayal. And, um, but Vito st sort of stood on the sidelines of that one, you can attest to that. Um, he didn't believe that they should stop anyone from making a film, that they should, when it comes out, scream and yell and um, respond to it, in a responsible way, but not to stop anyone from making a film, because he felt our enemies would basically do the same thing to us. Uh, so it's very, it's a very interesting story, and again, um, just for runtime, we weren't able to include that. So, May, I, oh, I'm please, sorry. Please. May I just say there were so many aspects and people uh, that were in Vito's life that maybe were not portrayed in the, in the movie, but then they should read Michael's book, because he talks. <laughs> All the ones are there. It's probably more accessible, and he does cover more people and events that were just probably too lengthy to put in here. Well, I was reading 300 pages, not 90 minutes, so that's... <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should read this book. I, I love the book. It was just a happy coincidence that, uh, just a coincidence that you had started working on the book while we were starting to work on the film, so it's, um, go buy it. It's in bookstores now. Oh, thank you for the plug. I, if I could just say one other, in, in response to Brandon's question about Arthur Bell, um, one thing that is kind of lost to history now, and it's a shame, is that Vito and Arthur did a column together called The Russo-Bell Connection, which was done to the New York Native in 1981, basically almost the whole year of 1981. And there had been some talk of collecting those into a book if it had lasted, and it's, it's a tragedy that it didn't happen because it's this brilliant commentary of these two on the phone every week gossiping about New York. But it's, it's more than just gossip. I mean, it's, it's a lot of film talk, and it's a lot of real gay history of New York City. And when you read it now, it's this perfect cross-section, it's this perfect overview of what was going on in gay Manhattan at that time. So um, I talk about it a lot in my book. And uh, it's also at New York Public Library. If you get a chance to read it, you really should. We are, we are collecting that material and all of Vito's writings for a book as well, so keep an eye out for that. Well, now I'm curious. So after Cruising was released, was Vito, was Vito raising hell? Oh, he loved that movie. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you, can, you can attest to that. Yes. You have to read the book. <laughs> you got to read the book. <laughs> no spoilers here. They were, also shooting, they were also shooting Can't Stop the Music with the village people at the same time. Oh, and the oh, protesters, the actually, they, they accidentally protested Nancy Walker instead of... <laughs> We have time for one last question. Uh, yes, way in the back. I think, is that 
Chin? Yes. Yes, it is chin. I thank you all very much for being here for your fantastic film. Thank you all so much for your time. Thank you.